Hello. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Independently where you are, I hope that you are healthy and well. My name is Nikola Vučković, and I'm globally responsible for market and fleet safety in Philip Morris International. And today, I would have a privilege to drive you through PMI world of connected fleet strategy implementation. Uh, I would like to share today with us, today with you, three guiding principles of sustainable fleet management model, the balance between safety, sustainability, and efficiency, and the role of connected technology in, some results, lessons learned on the journey, and the next steps. Definitely, at the end, I would like to give you some tips or advices how you can go with sustain, uh, sustainable and successful implementation of the similar strategy. Before all that, I would like very briefly to introduce my company and our fleet composition. So, Philip Morris International is leading international tobacco company and building a smoke-free future by being committed to sustainability. Our transformation journey will make PMI be far more than a just cigarette company. We want to change society and deliver a better smoke-free future. To make our vision a reality, we are transforming and stacking our entire future online of smoke-free products. Aligned with that one, our connected fleet strategy is really supporting through smoke-free fleet. On that journey, we have more than 70,000 employees around the world and more than 900 different scientists, engineers, and technicians working on the smoke-free products. We are present in more than 880 markets across and covering around 150 million consumers worldwide. Uh, talking about our products, we have six out of top 15 international brands, including Marlboro. And our production facilities are located around the globe, and we cover 39 production centers in, in, the, um, in the global map. So let's see now where we are with our uh, fleet. PMI have something like 23,000 vehicles in our global uh, fleet. Some of them are in direct sales distribution model. Some of them engage in the trade engagement uh, uh, activities. Simple split, I can say that 80% of the working tool uh, vehicles and 20% of the benefit cars, or from another perspective, 80% are passenger cars, more or less 10% like commercial vehicles and 10% of the trucks. As you can see on the pie on the lower part of the slide, our regional distribution is widely uh, set in Asian regions, East Asia and Australia 10% and South Asia 36, which is in total Asia covering almost 50% of our fleet. Then we go with European Union 22%, Latin America 14%, East Europe 12 and Middle East Africa around 6%. In general, with support of my colleagues from procurement, I can say that uh, talking about our OEMs, we have more than 20 major car OEMs covering 60 plus uh, brands. And even through the different uh, models of optimizations, we are around 400 different uh, models having corporations with um, 40 plus different leasing uh, companies or more than 1000 vendors. Of course, the whole process of optimization is uh, in progress and we are doing to really lean the whole uh, activities uh, in uh, our procurement uh, area. More or less, we talk about more than 150 million cash out, uh, uh, million dollars uh, cash out for the total fleet uh, activities. Regarding safety, and the carbon neutrality, we can say that uh, the result that we uh, have from July uh, this year, we are on 0 .47, 47 incidents per 1 million uh, kilometer uh, driven, which is at the end of the presentation, you will see significant uh, drop comparing with uh, some of the previous years and also comparing with uh, benchmarking with other industries, very uh, good uh, results. Uh, regarding the emission, at the moment, we are on 210 grams of uh, CO2 per kilometer uh, driven. Finally, <clears throat> once again, I would like to emphasize how important it is to have clear link between the company goals and your pro project uh, uh, contribution. This is why when we look way how we are supporting PMR core strategies with our 
connected uh, fleet uh, story. I can say that uh, PMI have seven core strategies. I will not put your focus on any of others except sustainability. Why? Sustainability is one of the elements that through their four sustainability strategic uh, priorities, we are covering area which I will talk about during my presentation. As you can see, the blue one, caring for the people we work with, and the green one, protecting the environment, actually are the areas in which have the biggest uh, contribution. And out of uh, six caring for the people uh, area, health, safety, and well-being at work is one in which uh, our connected fleet giving the highest contribution. As well, in the area protecting the environment, out of seven, different uh, elements that we are covering climate protection and actually carbon neutrality is the one that uh, we are contributing uh, the most so then let's see what are the three guiding principles for our journey of uh, change our mission in, on that uh, journey is to implement sustainable fleet management model that contributes to environmental targets improving employee safety comfort and overall experience while we are reducing TCO. For each of them, we have, we have defined objectives, talking about employee safety, zero preventable fleet accidents, regarding carbon emission to be carbon neutral by 2030 in our fleet, and definitely regarding the cost to reduce for a certain amount uh, our uh, cost from 2024 uh, till 2024, taking 2020 as our baseline. Nevertheless, program sponsorship and collaboration with wide range of key stakeholders is crucial element for success. This is why a part of a uh, department that are directly included in, in this, like finance, procurement, sustainability, and uh, my department, market and uh, fleet safety, we have the sponsorship from the senior vice president operations, as well co uh, contribution and collaboration with all other senior management team stakeholders uh, from all the departments, particularly our regional teams and the local affiliates. Once, when you have this one, we can move and see actually what are the key basic elements for success in a sustainable and connected fleet journey. For us in PMI, talking about connected fleet is much more than just implementation of technology. Yeah. Definitely telematics technology bringing safer and more efficient fleet. And this is one of the crucial elements talking about telematics, which I will say, uh, give some more details in a couple of uh, minutes. But without proper behaviors, technology will not have such a positive results. This is why we update our fleet safety training matrix with e-learning. We call it e-learning beyond for the fleet safety because taking in consideration elements which we read from the telematics uh, devices. As well, embedding more and more hybrid and electrical vehicles, we also teach our drivers how to efficiently drive and use actually unlock the full potential of hybrid and EV uh, vehicles. Finally, to have a proper balance and equilibrium in these three elements, we have the policies. This is why we launch new global fleet vehicle principles and practices with a new company fleet safety policy that actually ex putting the boundaries how and why we are using technology and why we are working on the behaviors of our employees. As I said, uh, new connected technology definitely bringing the benefits in the safety area and uh, and uh, of course uh, more efficient usage of the the cars uh, at the moment we cover something like 35 or 40 percent at this moment of our fleet with uh, telematics uh, technology more or less 28 out of 85 uh, markets but as a part of the journey that uh, i explained at the beginning which as a paramount have safety of our employees and minimizing the impact on environmental uh, pollution our final aim is that full working tool fleet uh, in philip morris will be equipped with telematics technology by the end of 2023 and we start 
with this journey a few years ago, at the beginning of this year, going in the standardization and the implementation of a global multi-level risk-based solution approach. What that mean, multi-level risk-based solution? Uh, having the fleet of 23,000 vehicles on the all five continents and in very different and challenging areas, you cannot have one solution fit all. This is why, based on the risk in the particular area, based on the local legislation requirements and the feedback from the markets, we define this multi-level risk-based approach, which consider usage of different platforms, either smartphone-based applications, installed device uh, solution, or combination of uh, these uh, two. And what we know as experience from the first couple of years of usage in, I could say, pilot uh, affiliates. Tangible telematics benefits are definitely a decreased collision and road fatalities up to 40% and the fuel reduction more or less around 9% followed by the CO2 emission reduction. Also, we can optimize the routing, do proper driver risk classification, which is one of the key elements for the discussion and the commentary drive that we have as a regular tool in discussion driver uh, between driver and the direct uh, supervisors as well we are working on proactive approach and developing our leading safety indicators in this uh, area by as well keeping the uh, maintenance cost on the lower side but as well we have a lot of intangible or even compliance benefits first of all with the program that we are now running till 2023 we are going under system unification which will protect company image and the reputation as uh, intangible uh, benefit, improve the fleet safety communication between the driver and supervisor. In some critical area, it also improve driver security, like in area of Mexico or some Middle East, uh, Brazil, and different countries that security is also a big, uh, big concern. Uh, fleet safety recognition program is very important. You need to have this motivational element. And when you have the true data from the telematics, this really helps us a lot. As well as uh, investigation uh, part when we uh, go deeper in understanding the root cause of the incident. We are using telematics not to blame anyone, but really to learn something and to understand the root cause of the incident. And of course, regarding compliance, to be compliant with our internal um, and external uh, requirements, sustainability goals, and uh, policy. Another element of this uh, program is as well global implementation of, I can freely say, best in class capability building fleet safety e learning program, which is based on the driver's core competency score and the driving style as well. This is something new. Apart of these six core competency that we use even in the past that understand the real risk that driver uh, have and actually understanding hazard perception evaluation of uh, our driver. We include the core science together, of course, with a uh, provider of uh, the service and our partners. But on this, uh, as of this year, we include something new. We include personal driver style from telematics. So based on the readings from telematics, now we include additional elements, additional lessons for our drivers. This is a three years program which we will cover the full population of our drivers and go uh, uh, with uh, benefits that it's not just the standardized uh, training, but this is really progressive learning uh, strategy. Working on these six core competencies of defensive uh, driving, we are attaching to this emotional persuasion. And this is something new and something uh, different. As well, we can clearly follow our progress internally benchmarking between the regions, markets, or the drivers, but as well have where we are uh, regarding external uh, benchmark. What we learned in the previous years uh, with implementation in this 30, 35% of our markets. First of all, I would like to share what we are following with the uh, telematics implementation. This is the list of geolocation, overspeeding, mileage, hard acceleration, braking, or uh, steering. And what was the main triggers for the implementation of this? 95% of our colleagues said that this is safe drive. So as a main trigger to start with this one. 
72% that they would like to have the vehicle tracking because of different uh, sales activities, 68 fuel monitoring, 58 security, and 32% to better utilize uh, vehicle and have the optimization in that area. How we go through this uh, process at the beginning, select uh, supplier through tender, it's for 75%, uh, having 54% going with the pilot. Of course, uh, in area that we have lack of some specific knowledge, we use the consultancy, 45% through the leasing company, 38%, and some other ways, 11 What we get as an outcome? Fewer traffic incidents are reported on the 95% uh, of our uh, affiliates. Lower fuel consumption in 70%, predictive maintenance on the 40, 55, and better vehicle occupancy on the planning, 35. Is it everything going very smooth? Of course not. You always have certain obstacles uh, there. So, uh, what was the main obstacles? Data analysis, 32%, and the installation, 31%, which is something that also uh, the providers of the service need to take in consideration that uh, on the global scale, you need to really be present and uh, easy. That uh, story, data collection, 28%. And what I would like to uh, emphasize here, Privacy regulation and work councils or the trade unions in total 37%. And this is something that I would like to emphasize at the end of uh, this uh, presentation. So what is the strategy impact? Is there that actually through this implementation, you can see that uh, in 2021, number of connected vehicles is uh, around 40 at the end of the year will be 20, 22, 70. And as I said, 100% of our uh, vehicles in end of 2023, together followed by this enrolling of the e-learning uh, program. What is the impact? On the lower slide, you can see decrease in the fatality incidents through years, total recoverable incident as well, significantly gone down, go, goes down, and finally collision rate, which is a picture of uh, our um, serious uh, incident. The same story with uh, our effect on uh, echo driving and uh, decrease the total impact on uh, our carbon uh, footprint. Finally, I would like to share some of the key elements for the successful implementation of connected uh, fleet. First, you need to have sustainable fleet car culture. On that, you are building your leadership with commitment, clear, fleet policy, roles and responsibilities, and very strong engagement with the key stakeholders. Then you have your base. At that moment, you can start planning. What is the scope that you would like to cover? Deliverables, go with some pilot program like we did with targeted area, deeply discuss data privacy concerns, go through the bidding and then check IT requirements, uh, 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 let's say needs. Then discuss and have info sessions with trade unions, work councils, communicate properly campaign, educate an employee, having employee buy-in, and then train them how to properly use this. Then you can start with data collection, analysis of the data, and the normalization of the whole uh, story with needed system adjustments. Finally, you can define the feedback channels through the dashboards, emails, applications, or different reports, and never forget performance recognition system as a key element of success. Once when you have all these, in our case, we ensure the successful implementation. And I hope that this presentation and some of these tips will help you as well on the, your journey implementing connected fleets. Thank you very much for your attention.